In these two letters, there are two lessons that I've never told anyone before that I wish I knew before it was too late. When I was a kid, my grandma passed away and I felt nothing. Zero. Not a milch. I think I was thinking about Maple Story to be honest at that time and how to get my assassin to our level. She was so kind to me, so caring of my sister and I. Why didn't I feel anything? Was I a monster? Was I just a terrible person? And it bothered me for years, especially when I became older. And every time we talked to my grandma, I was like, wow, was I a bad person for not feeling anything when she passed away? Now, a couple years ago, now as an adult, my grandpa fell and he went to the hospital. My entire family went to go see him. And to be honest, I was like surface level worried, but like inside, I kind of also felt nothing. To be honest, my mind was more preoccupied with the next Canto Mendo video. What was wrong with me? But if I'm gonna be real with you, like, my grandpa was just a grandpa to me. It was kind of slimming to my grandpa. Like, it was an old person who I felt obligated to show respect to and care for because they were a part of my family, but I wasn't too emotionally attached. It was always more for my parents to make them happy. So my grandpa was pretty old and he was sick too. And they told us, hey, you know, we can either do an operation on him to hopefully get him out and extend his life, or we could just have him lie peacefully until he eventually passes. And this is where I'm gonna sound like a really bad person. And this is where the bad side of me comes out. And I wanna thank one of our students, Jackie, for giving me the courage to share this story. Cause he doesn't know it, but his dad caught cancer and he became motivated to learn Chinese to connect with him before it was too late. And he shared that with me. Kind of reminded me about this whole story in the first place. But I remember at that moment when the doctor told my parents, you know, we can either extend his life and do this operation or just let him pass away slowly. I remember thinking selfishly in my head, we should just let him go. We can't really do much anymore. And it's like, it's a lot for everyone to be constantly coming to the hospital, taking care of him, like doing all these errands. I remember I was like, why don't they just let him go? Like, I think it'd be a lot easier for him and to be honest, like, it's a lot easier for us. But my parents and aunts, they really wanted the operation. And so we told the doctor, let's go for it. Let's extend his life. And so over the next couple of weeks, as I predicted, things got really complicated. We had to keep visiting him in the hospital, running errands. And each time I'd come in, say my greetings, and then just let my parents do all the talking. One time my mom actually told me to go by myself to drop something off because everyone else was busy. And so I went to the hospital to drop something off. I just dropped off the thing, said my little dilly dallies and was getting ready to leave. But he tried to chat with me and I look back. I mean, this guy just sits by himself in the hospital bed all day, staring out the window. And so I was like, okay, I, I guess I'll try and converse back. But my Chinese was so broken. We could barely chat. He wasn't like my parents, like Chinglish didn't make sense to him. And so I couldn't really tell him about my day, tell him what things were happening, even tell him about my life because I didn't know how to say that in Chinese. And so I left feeling sad. Like I never really cared too much about learning Chinese growing up. And I always just said, you know, ha ha, you know, I'm ABC. It's normal, it's funny, it's like relatable. You know what I mean? Ha ha ha, sick time, sick gong. But in that moment with my grandpa, it wasn't funny anymore. I couldn't laugh about it. I couldn't be like, oh, ha ha, you know, I'm, I'm ABC, you know, that's how it is. The thought of my grandpa sitting all day in the hospital bed by himself, all alone, can't talk to any of the hospital staff because they don't speak Chinese. And then finally his grandson comes in. It's the exact same thing. Was this why I never felt anything with my grandma? Was it because I had just never been able to get to know my grandma, my grandpa, because of my poor Chinese. And so I thought, he has some time left, let me try and get better. So I committed to learn the language in hopes that by the Chinese New Year, I could express to him how I feel in a letter or something. Just express exactly, you know, my thoughts and how I feel about our relationship. But it wasn't easy, right? I had tried a bunch of classes and tutors in the past and none of it had really helped. But I really committed myself to learn the language. I said, I'm not gonna quit. I don't want this regret. So I committed so much so that over the next couple of months, I found a way to learn a lot faster and my Chinese got better really fast. And with each visit, at the hospital, I was able to talk to him a bit more and I got to know him a little bit better. I learned about how he grew up, how actually he's not even from Macau, but actually from the mainland in Guangdong. And he just fled to Macau during the civil war. How he watched his brother die of starvation, the crazy things he's seen living through multiple wars, how they immigrated to Canada and just all the crazy hardships he went through that led to him now becoming this really, really positive grandpa. And it's crazy to think about because he's He's been through so much. Over this time, I got closer to him and more attached. I started visiting him in the hospital, not because my mom told me or my dad told me or because I had to, because I actually wanted to. And best of all, I was grateful he got that surgery and extended his life because I was able to get to know him and I was able to get my letter done in time and I read it to him by his bed in the hospital. And so this is the letter I wrote to him. Um, it's written in Mandarin. Obviously it's uh, reprinted, but um, I legit have not looked at this letter in a long time, so. Uh, let's uh, let's give it a read for you guys. Wai Kong, 
，祝你新年快乐。我知道你今年在医院过年，所以没有那个过年的感觉，但我还是想跟你说，恭喜发财，万事如意。由于我已经回学校上课了，所以无法陪你过年。不过我有几句话想跟你说。老实说，我很后悔小时候没有好好学中文。经过这几个礼拜和你相处，我才发觉我们直到现在从来都没有好好的聊过天。因为我从小中文不太好，所以从没试着与你好好的讲过话。每次见面只能简单的跟你说几句话，还常常听不懂你回我的话。过去几周来医院探望你。我自己开始意识到你为我们所做的多少牺牲，还有种种克服的障碍。当初你们不会讲英语，但是为了给我们一个更好的生活，你们移民到了加拿大。为了给我们一个更好的未来，你们放弃了澳门的一切，包括过去的朋友、熟悉的语言。我知道这一定对你们来说很艰辛，但是你从来不求任何回报，甚至没有和我们提起过。直到目前为止，我从来都没有真正的感谢过你，甚至没有好好的与你坐下来听你说你的故事。我想和你说，我非常感谢你们为我们所做出的牺牲。虽然我从来没有跟你好好的沟通过，也从来没有和你诉说我生活中发生的点点滴滴，或者我内心的感受，但你总是对我表现出无条件的爱和支持。当我小的时候。总是认为这些爱与关怀是理所当然的，在这里跟你说声不应该。我记得每次来跟你打招呼，你的脸上都会露出一个很大的微笑，看着你的微笑，我也跟着开心。本来郁闷的心情也不知不觉的转好了起来。我希望你一切安好，每天脸上挂着微笑。不要去在意你过去的痛苦了，因为你有了六个身心健全的好孩子，另外还有十一个外孙。我想跟你说，我们都爱你，时常都挂念着你。你对我们所有人的生活所产生的贡献，实在是无法用言语来形容。我祝福你一切安康美好，开开心心的过日子。真的很感谢你，祝你新年快乐。And so I read him that first letter with my mom, family, and grandma in the room, and it was a really special moment for my family. And that was the first letter. Now there's still a second one with an even more important lesson. But I remember he was so happy to hear it, and I remember visiting the hospital every day from that point on. And I always saw this letter right next to him. It was like three pages that time because I made it really big font so you could read, and it made me smile each time I saw it because each time it was more crumpled up. Because he was probably reading it again. But a bit after that, really, really good news came. They told us he was getting better and he'd be out of the hospital soon. That he could come home and maybe just be with all of us for the spring. And this was super exciting because in my mind I was like, holy crap! Like I've gotten so attached to my grandpa after seeing the letter and everything.、And、I was thinking like I could finally talk to him now because my Chinese was better now. Sure, I mean it sucks that I missed out on all those years in the past, but at least I still have time now. You know, at least he's he's ready to get out of the hospital. But I remember one day out of nowhere. Like I literally saw him the day before, but I was in the middle of filming a video, and I just got a text: "Grandpa passed away peacefully this morning," and it was shocking. I remember I was I was sitting at my shoot, and I was like, "I've never had that happen before." Where one day you think everything's good, he's there, then the next day he's gone. My heart just sunk in that moment. I'd gotten so used to the routine of seeing him in the hospital, and I remember like. We we're gonna see him outside the hospital and win back that lost time from all those years when I could barely talk to him, just like that, gone. And it was such a big roller coaster. I remember because we were literally getting ready and preparing for him to come back. And now all of a sudden, it's like my mom's like, "Hey, his funeral is in four days." Just to go from you're preparing for him to come back to funeral in four days, like it's crazy. And for me, it hurt a lot knowing that I'd finally gotten to a level where I could understand, talk to him, and now it was too late. And I remember I felt pretty down. I was just lying in bed all day,、um, you know, like, like. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean to swear, but like, damn. But I remember my mom. She came in my room and she was like, "Can you prepare a PowerPoint slide of like all his photos and stuff, memories, so we can play at his funeral?" And I'd never been to a funeral before, so I didn't really know what happened at a funeral. And so I was like, "Oh, I didn't know we had PowerPoint slides." And so I kind of like took a moment to just look up like what a funeral was actually like, and I saw something. It said people give eulogies at funerals, and I was like, "Oh, maybe I could give a eulogy." I remember as I was looking through the photos, looking through all the different memories <laughs> of my grandpa, I, I felt inspired. I told my mom. That I wanted to give a eulogy at his funeral, and I wanted to give it in Chinese. And she looked at me. She said, "Really? Like I think you're the only like kid, because they call us all kids, who's gonna be doing one." She told me she wasn't even planning on doing one. I said, "Yeah." And so I prepared my eulogy, and I'd never been to a funeral before, so I had no idea what to expect. But 
it's really sad. Like you go into a funeral and they do like an open casket and you see your grandpa. It was really hard seeing my grandpa, the body. It made me really nervous about the eulogy. What would my aunts and uncles think? Would they think like, oh, you never really bothered with him when you were a kid and suddenly, you know, now you care. You know, it's just like all these insecurities and that anxiety came into my mind. You know, I'm giving a eulogy in front of everyone in Chinese. But all I knew was that I wanted to give a eulogy and I wanted to give a eulogy in a language that my grandpa would understand. I didn't want to sit there and give a eulogy in English. And so my eulogy was set for near the end. And my mom and her siblings ended up giving speeches. And it's crazy. It was the first time in my life I'd seen all of them. All my aunts, my mom, and everything cry like that. And like, you see your parents so strong all the time. And you forget that they were just like me, right? Kids figuring out life. And to them, like, this wasn't their grandpa. This was literally their dad. And it'd be like if my dad passed away. I don't think I've ever cried so much in my life. Going to the funeral is the first time in my life that I really saw what regret looks like. It's the first time in my life that I really saw in my mom's eyes as she did her speech, regretting always thinking about traveling with friends, but not with her own parents. Regretting taking her own parents for granted as they aged. Regretting that she focused so much on making money and her career, when at the end of the day, she made all this money, but she hadn't used it to buy back what she wanted most, which was quality time with her loved ones. And now it was too late for that. Wishing there was more time, wishing she had made priority of the relationship with her parents, what she cared about when there wasn't any more time for that. And I could go all day about all the lessons I learned because when you see what regret really looks like in front of your face, you, you learn a lot, you really learn a lot. But eventually it came my turn and I was nervous because I was gonna do it all in Chinese in front of everyone. But to me, it was really important that my grandma understands that everyone here, everyone at the funeral, my grandpa most importantly understands what I'm talking about. And so, this was the eulogy I gave. I'm gonna read it for you guys too. I know it's one in Cantonese. Um, when my Mandarin got better, my Cantonese got better too. So I was able to write the eulogy in Cantonese. So let's go. Dagaho, Ngoku Sheldon, Punzi Lun Hang Oga Gong Gong, Dong or Tenong or Gong Gong Gayan San King Lick and See How. Ngoku got that Nigo Yan, Lick Jun, Gan San, Tan Hai Tong Ku, King Gai Gossi, Lim Muyo Nigo Gam Go, Ngo Ying Sik Gaku. 是一個和蔼、經常面帶微笑的人 我最敬愛的公公,佢為大家帶來的歡樂會永遠流傳喺我哋心中,希望公公一路好走,喺佢安息的地方繼續散播歡樂。I remember I broke down midway, but I still managed to deliver the whole thing. And I remember when I left, my aunt messaged me, and she messaged me, your grandpa would be proud of you for that. And so all that to say, you know, I, I can't take back all the years and wish I prioritized Chinese more when I was a kid so I could have gone to share memories with him. It's part of life. You know, I'm not, I'm not perfect. Do I, do I wish I learned earlier? Yeah, but just the fact that I was able to have that time, give that speech, it gave me a lot of closure. And so look, the lesson that I wish I could go back in time and tell myself is, you know, <laughs> you, you, Sheldon, you said all these years, you know, you can barely hold a conversation with your parents let alone your grandparents. And you say you want to get better at Chinese, but you're putting Chinese on the back burner for all these years. You laugh it off saying, ah, you know, you, you know, I can speak Chinglish and ah, you know, I can't communicate with my family. You know, sick time, sick dong, it's funny. It's a relatable meme. And you say you don't have time to learn Sheldon, but then I see you clubbing on a Friday night. I see you scrolling through your phone. I see you out with your friends, hanging out, you know, doing nothing, chilling. And so you can improve and learn. You just didn't make it a priority, Sheldon. And so all that to say, the lesson is too often, we wait for there to be a problem. We wait for there to be something like this before we take action. But if you had just thought two steps ahead, if I had thought, Sheldon, you know, you're Chinese. Everyone around you is Chinese. It might not be today. It might not be tomorrow. But at some point, you're gonna feel some kind of repercussion from not being able to speak your own language. At some point, you know, it's gonna suck not being able to speak with your, your grandpa. And so if I could go back in time to my high school university self, who always said he doesn't have the time to learn Chinese, who said, I have school, you know, I'm busy. I would say, yes, it's comfortable to watch Netflix, to hang out, get some bubble tea with friends, to ease your mind after a long day of studying. But to me back then, I would say, is it worth for you 
to make yourself uncomfortable for 10 to 15 minutes a day for a year to let get the language of your people down so that you can be comfortable for the rest of your life moving forward so that you can be able to speak with the people you care about most because whether that happens or not is up to you it's up to you if you want to make that time it's not about whether you have the time because you have that time sheldon you absolutely had that time and so i hope my story inspires you to take action to connect with a loved one grandpa parents anyone pick up the phone and call them because you never really know what could happen and trust me when you see what regret looks like you absolutely do not want that